Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, in this session, uh, we will discuss um, uh, how bank panics led to the need for deposit insurance and how government across the globe responded to, uh, responded to that and then what are the further likely effects of uh, deposit insurance that is a government safety net uh, on the health of uh, or, or the working of a financial system. So one of the response was the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation uh, was set up in the US that was in 1934. This was as a response to the bank failure that, that happened in the US and other countries. So you know that the uh, 1929 Great uh, Depression uh, that uh, started in the US and spread to other countries became a global recession. Uh, the global recession of 1929, uh, one of the characteristics of this global recession was the bank failure. So several banks failed, that was the one of the starting point of the global Great Depression. Uh, there was a lot, several banks failed during this period. So this is called bank failure and you know that if there is no government policy intervention or there is no government safety net, this bank panics and contagion effect, it actually happened uh, in the US and other developed countries and the uh, bank failure and uh, it actually led to the collapse of the financial system and subsequently it led to the uh, economic uh, depression in the developed world. So as a response, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation was set up in 1934. So what they do, they insure the deposit of the customers, the depositors. That means if a bank failure, no issue that actually the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation will be uh, refunding uh, your deposit. That is the uh, one of uh, overall um, uh, putting the function of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation in one sentence. We can say that if the bank fails, uh, you will be getting back uh, your deposit uh, through F FDIC. And obviously, in order to get the coverage, uh, a small premium uh, will be collected from the deposit and uh, that money will be used in order to make the payoff. So there are two primary methods uh, have been used to handle a failed bank. Uh, one is called the payoff method. And in the case of the payoff method, uh, what the bank, uh, the FDIC would do, uh, the FDIC allows the banks to fail bank to fail and pays off depositors up to the insurance limit that is one method and second method uh, second method is called purchase and assumptions method purchase and assumptions method and actually typically these are actually more costly for FDIC so theoretically or uh, we can say that what the FDIC is supposed to do that means when the bank fails then pays off the depositors up to the insurance limit that is the general uh, conventional function of uh, FDIC but actually uh, you know that by going through the importance of banking system that means uh, not letting a bank to fail that is more important right if one bank fails and because of contagion effect other banks also fail and practical sense we know that is not the best strategy the first one is not the best strategy uh, it actually better to is better to avoid uh, the bank failure so that if there is FDIC is there uh, if the FDIC is there that is federal deposit insurance corporation is there if all the uh, depositors are assured that uh, if the bank fail immediately the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation will be uh, paying back my deposit. Then because of that, you can say that the bank panic, uh, bank panic, uh, this will be reduced, right? If Even if one bank fails, uh, people won't be running to the bank because they are now covered with a, a government safety net. That means the <coughs> deposit insurance, right? So then this one, uh, 
this all promise is already there uh, this promise is already there that the pay of uh, promise uh, because of that one can expect that the bank panic the magnitude of the uh, bank panic will be reduced and the contagion effect will be reduced and what if a bank is in trouble so normally uh, banks uh, the fdic uh, practically they use the second method that is purchase and assumption methods so if suppose if one bank is uh, about to fail then the FDIC reorganizes the bank typically by finding a willing merging merger partner who assumes who takes over all the fa all the fails banks liabilities so that no depositor or other credit losses happen and however uh, this is typically a uh, more costly for FDIC you know why because in order to ensure that some other banks uh, acquire this failed bank then actually FDIC has to often sweeten uh, the port for the merger partner by providing it with subsidized loan or by buying some of the failed banks weaker loans and because of that is typically more costly uh, in real and monetary terms for the FDIC than the payoff method however you know that more practical sense actually the second method is most preferred method uh, because it's better not to allow a bank to completely fail and instead uh, when the the FDIC is uh, understand that one bank is almost is almost about to fail that means its net worth has become very weak uh, it become very weak uh, then it uh, encourage uh, the purchase and assumption method in india we had deposit insurance and credit guarantee, guarantee corporation uh, i would suggest you visit the website to get um, all the relevant information how what are the functions of uh, deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporations then about this institution this uh, credit deposit insurance scheme in india uh, it was set up the act was passed uh, in 1961 and came in came into force on january 1st 1962 so this was actually prompted by the bank failure that the Lakshmi bank and palai central bank in 1960 and throughout in 1960 throughout india many banks have been facing crisis banking crisis then out of these two banks already failed then government responded uh, with the deposit insurance act in 1961 and then finally uh, the scheme came into effect on 1962 and 1978 uh, deposit insurance and credit guarantee cooperation was set up under uh, rbi so what dicgc do do dicgc insures all banks deposits such as savings, fixed, current and recurring deposit up to the limit of um, this much uh, 5 lakhs of each deposit in a bank. So banks pay premium to the deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporations. So actually when we deposit our money in the bank actually we are not aware that uh, a premium has been paid because the banks will be paying uh, the premium from uh, our fund uh, the, the, that means it will be already included or deducted from our interest income that the, the bank will be giving to us this is uh, again i would suggest you visit our uh, reserve bank of india website uh, to get the history of deposit insurance in india how the scheme evolved and what are the activities uh, what are the how it intervene in over time uh, in the market in order to minimize or in order to reduce the bank failure this is what we have seen that one kind of government safety net what we have discussed uh, till now uh, was the response of government in the form of a uh, deposit insurance scheme right in the us we have seen in the india and in most countries they are having deposit insurance scheme then another kind of uh, intervention by government is lender to act as lender of the last resort suppose even without deposit insurance government will be giving other support uh, in, in addition to uh, deposit insurance government will be giving additional support uh, to the troubled institutions and also by the government so this not only one by central bank help the troubled institution and also the government also help the troubled institution so simply deposit insurance is not the only form of uh, government safety net in other countries uh, governments have often stood ready to provide 
support to domestic banks facing runs even in the absence of explicit uh, de deposit insurance furthermore banks are not the only financial intermediaries that can pose a systemic threat to the financial system so when financial institutions are very large or highly interconnected with the other financial institutions or markets uh, their failure has the potential to bring down the entire financial system so one way in which governments provide support is through lending from the central bank to the troubled institution that is one way so this form of support is often referred to as the lender of last resort so what would happen that when the government is there or the central bank and government is there to support the failed bank what we are going to see that maybe because of deposit insurance and the government is acting or the central bank is acting as the lender of the last resort we are going to see that uh, it is going to have some uh, adverse impact uh, negative impact uh, in the financial system so there are some drawbacks uh, of this government safety net let us discuss this one by one so one of the uh, drawback of government safety net is uh, it will further encourage the moral hazard problem and it will also encourage the problem of adverse selection so we have seen that because of uh, asymmetric information the moral hazard and adverse selection issues come up and because of that actually the government intervention is required to minimize uh, information asymmetry and also for example to reduce uh, for example uh, the bank panic uh, government intervention is required in the form of government safety net that is deposit insurance plus we also seen that governments steadily stand uh, for the uh, financial institution in the form of lender of the last resort it is actually all came up to reduce moral hazard and adverse selection issues but what we are going to see that it also aggravates this minimizes at the same time there are some other channels uh, mechanism through which we can see that uh, the government safety nets which is supposed to be a blessing uh, but is going to be a curse and is going to adversely affect uh, the economy the working of the uh, financial market one is the moral hazard issues so the most serious drawback of government safety net stems from moral hazard that the incentive of one party in a transaction to engage in activities are detrimental to the other party so because of the existence of deposit insurance what is going to happen because here uh, with a safety net dep net uh, depositors know that they will not suffer losses if a bank fails they do not impose uh the discipline of the marketplace on banks by withdrawing deposit when they suspect that the bank is taking on too much risk so important point is that because of the government safety net uh since all our deposits are deposit uh, deposits are insured by government that is the deposit insurance corporations depositors began to take everything granted they do not impose any impose discipline in marketplace that means if they see that one bank is keep on investing in risky uh, assets or they are making uh, risky investment then the people think that the depositors still don't take it seriously because they think that doesn't matter uh, i'll be getting back my money because go government will be paying it back anyway so in the, that is one on the depositor side they won't uh, impose any discipline so similarly uh, we can also the depositors not only individual uh, investors uh, depositors even institutional depositors those who have the ability capacity to do the uh, monitoring they also uh, won't do the uh, won't do the monitoring here because they are also assured that government will be paying back their deposits or right so similarly financial institutions have an incentive to take uh, on greater risk why because you can see that banks with a government safety net have an incentive to take on a greater risk than the they otherwise would because since the government will be the, the deposit insurance corporation will be paying back the depositors money so this actually make uh, incentivize uh, it will aggravate the moral hazard problem among the banker itself banker they themselves find that uh, is better to it doesn't matter uh, financial institution with a government safety net how an incentive to take on greater risk than they otherwise would because tax payers uh, tax payers will 
foot the bill if the bank subsequently goes by goes belly up so here you can see that uh, if anything goes wrong uh, finally this is that the heads i win tails the uh, taxpayer loss right this is the bet here actually uh, if uh, they, they make a risky investment and if they lose doesn't matter finally the taxpayers are going to uh, compensate uh, they are going to make the final payment to the depositors then the second problem we can see that it also aggravate the adverse selection problems you know how adverse selection problem we have already seen that is an ex ante problem that means the risk lovers will be liking uh, risk lovers means they will be making risky investments so as a result of government safety net risk lovers uh, who are the risk lovers they find that banking industry is attractive so they will think that uh, since they will make investment they would prefer now risk lovers uh, they will be preferring uh, the banking business uh, because the risk loving enterprise entrepreneurs might find the financial industry uh, particularly banking system a particularly attractive one that means they know they will be able to engage in highly risky activities highly risky activities even worse because protected depositors and creditors have so little reason to monitor the financial institutions activities that means now the depositors and uh, creditors they have little reason to monitor financial institutions and as a result you can see that there is going to be more and more adverse selection uh, that means without government intervention outright crooks might also find finance an attractive industry for their activities uh, because it's easy for them to get away with the fraud and embezzlement so that means overall because of the government safety net in the form of deposit insurance corporation uh, we can see that it will be a encouraging uh, that means it will be in one way or directly or indirectly uh, promoting uh, or aggravating the adverse selection problem as well so to sum uh, summarize this one we can see that it will be aggravating the moral hazard problem and adverse selection problem as well not only this we can also see that it will further make uh, make the too big to fail as a serious issue so the moral hazard created by a government safety net and the desire to prevent financial institution failures have presented the financial regulations with a particular issue uh, that is called too big to fail problem in which regulators are reluctant to close down large financial institutions and impose losses on institutions depositors and creditors because doing so might precipitate uh, the financial crisis so that means government won't allow large financial institution to fail that means government provides guarantees of repayment to large uninsured credit creditors of the largest financial institution even when they are not entitled to this guarantee and this term too big to fail it was popularized by us congressman in 1984 the too big to fail is a concept used for banks or financial institution that are so big and interconnected that if they fail the economy is at the risk of substantial damage that means it would uh, eventually lead to a financial crisis and financial crisis would further lead to economic crisis that means economic recession so normally in general uh, there is a perception among the general public and financial institution that large financial institution even because of their own activity if they engage in lots of adverse selection and moral hazard behavior even if so government won't allow them to fail because if they fail that means the entire economy and their financial system is going to collapse and that means it is going to uh, lead to economic recession that is nothing but increase in unemployment uh, increase in unemployment the decline in gdp uh, decline in government revenue that the government tax all you know that actually finally is going to uh, making the life miserable right so because of that you know that the government won't allow this one and this term gain more popularity during the 2007-8 crisis clash during this time it became uh, the, the concept become more even more and more familiar so before uh, we were discussing more about this one you just think uh, what if uh, a large bank in india suppose sbi fails so we can just see that 
uh, if SBI fails, you know that is one of the largest commercial bank in India uh, with uh, several branches and taking has, accepting deposit from uh, millions of households and in institutional investors and lending money to the different sectors of the economy and also investing in government bonds. If SBI yes, fails. Obviously, you know that it is going to make an adverse impact on the entire financial system and follow uh, subsequently on the, in the economy as well. So, what SBI in this case, uh, we can see that from SBI perspective, uh, maybe we can see that they may be uh, they may be making lots of uh, that uh, uh, risky investment. Even if this fail, what they will be thinking that even the government won't allow, uh, even if their net worth become negative. Uh, suppose the net worth uh, because net worth become uh, decline and become negative uh, even then they will think that since they are too big uh, they are actually too big to fail government won't allow them to fail and because this actually uh, what happened that this uh, too big to fail policy increases the moral hazard incentives for banking institutions and not only for banking institution and also for non-banking financial institutions that are extended a government safety net. So, uh, knowing that the financial institution will be bailed out, uh, creditors have little incentive to monitor institutions and pull their money out when the institution is taking excessive risk. So, as a result, what we can see that uh, large or interconnected financial institutions are more likely to engage uh, in highly risky uh, activities uh, making a financial crisis uh, more likely. So, at the end of the 2007-8 financial crisis, uh, we know that the, in the Congress uh, there was uh, lots of discussion about the bailout package. Uh, initially it was uh, declined and later on you know that um, a bailout package was passed. Actually, we can see that the financial crisis of 2007-8 was man-made crisis uh, mainly because the financial institution especially uh, greedy uh, investors, uh, greedy financial institutions and they actually created 2007-8 crisis as per several analysis and reports. Finally, who was to pay? The bailout package finally uh, it was passed and the billions of dollars were spent for the bailing out of the financial sector in 2007-8. Finally, um, it was the taxpayers money let us call it uh, Main Street and Wall Street means the uh, financial sector and finally because of the greed of final Wall Street uh, that the 2007-8 crisis happened finally the all the laws it has been compensated by the Main Street that means the general public that the taxpayers money and why it happened it because uh, at the end you know that we cannot allow uh, the big financial institution to fail uh, we need them because uh, if they fail the entire financial system will collapse that means then the financial system is not there which we discussed in the beginning of the say, course that means it the financial market ensure the smooth flow of fund from uh, those who save and to the sector where it can be make more efficient use of capital and without financial system uh, this movement will not happen that the smooth flow of fund from one sector to other sector will not happen and the economic activity that the investment will uh, productive activities will come down that the economic activities will come down and economy will be in a uh, economic recession right an economic recession will take place and and because of all that and you know that we cannot make the financial market that the financial system to collapse so that means at the end uh, you know that the it will be the taxpayers money will be uh, used to bail out um, uh, the big financial institutions and you can see that the bank failure uh, it also happened maybe one of the reason is that the 1980s to this period bank failure happened and several analysis uh, has been saying that the bank failure because here uh, during this period you know that because of this the um, uh, FDIC was set up right because of as a response to uh, bank failure and further analysis maybe and then after many years several years uh, because of this um, there was a limited little bank failure in the US but in 1980s after 1982 to uh, 1990s 92 you can see that several many banks failed 
number of banks failed you can see that is many banks failed and one of the several analysis suggests that the reason for the bank failure in the 1980s to 1990s is mainly because the uh, the is one of the consequence of government safety net uh, that the uh, deposit insurance corporation plus government standing or the that government standing or central bank standing uh, as the lender of the last resort that also contributed to the failure bank failure in the 1980s and again uh, 2007 8 uh, again you can see that several banks failed and here also we have seen that the too big to fail problem we have seen here that and you know that again it may be many analysis suggest that it also because of uh, one of the adverse effect the drawbacks of government safety net so the mainly the bank failures in the 1980s uh, was uh, mainly it was considered as mainly because of uh, the existence of government safety net in addition the financial innovations also produce uh, new uh, instruments that widen the scope of risk taking and several banks uh, they issued junk bonds uh, during as part of the, their financial innovations and issue of junk bonds they thought that uh, they issued this one uh, however uh, again it on the back uh, backdrop it was a perception that if something goes wrong if their investment goes wrong the government will be bailing them out uh, in addition, um, uh, we can see that financial consolidation and the government safety net uh, also contributed to the bank failure. Uh, let us uh, conclude this session here and let us continue this discussion in the next session. Thank you.